So Nix is a programming language, a purely functional, very simple programming language. You can kind of think of it as JSON with types. I'm mm -hmm. stealing this from a friend of mine, Prof Patch. And it's so simple that it doesn't even really have name top level variables. You can't even give names to things. It's just a data structure and then you can write some transformations instead of the data structure. It feels very natural to people who are used to languages like Haskell or Erlang, so more on the functional side of things. And it can feel a little bit alien to people coming from other backgrounds, which I think is one of the barriers to entry of the language. Mm -hmm. The second thing called Nix is the package manager itself. So the package manager implements a concept called derivations. Derivation is essentially a data structure that says, we have a transformation that we want to apply to some data. Usually this transformation is something like running a compiler or running a some other tool that does file transformations. And these derivations specify all of the inputs that they have fully pinned, which means that we have full SHA hashes of everything that gets into the derivation. And then this information together can be used to create a hash. So you take the hashes of everything going into your derivation, including sort of recursively, if you think about it, other derivations, I'll bring up an example in a second, and the build instructions, and you hash them together and you get something that uniquely identifies this particular operation to be executed. An example of this is if you're building a program foo and it depends on a library bar, then you would have a der derivation for your library bar and that derivation would be passed into the derivation for your program foo. And the hash of those together uh, would yield the exact hash specifying how to build your program. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that if any of the sort of recursive inputs of your library change, so for example, you're exchanging the compiler version or you're linking against a new version of OpenSSL, then the hashes kind of change all the way down in this tree, similar mm -hmm. to a data structure called a Merkle tree, if you're familiar with that. Okay, how does this compare to a DAG? It essentially is a DAG. That's exactly what I was thinking. It sounds like a DAG to me. Okay. Yeah. So you have this graph of some kind of root node that you're realizing, yeah. which could be like an entire operating system, or if you're thinking even grander, like the entire state of a data center or just a single mm -hmm. package. And then you have this tree that unfolds below it that right. represents all of the various inputs that need to go into this tree. An interesting thing about this is that because all of the inputs and the exact transformation applied are hashed together, you get a property out of this that is called repeatability. It's not quite the same as reproducibility. We might want to talk about that a little bit later, but it essentially gives you the guarantee that you can rerun this exact computation in the exact state that you expect. Mm -hmm.